as I sit here right now, there are four different versions of the iPad and it could be really confusing. The most expensive version is the iPad Pro and it's obviously the most powerful iPad available. But below that in price is the iPad Air, which is not as powerful, but it's pretty capable for an iPad. And below that in price is the iPad Mini, which is kind of like an iPad Air with a smaller display. But below the iPad Mini in price is just the iPad. Yes, it has a bigger screen than the iPad Mini. So why does it even exist? That's what I've always asked myself. Why does this iPad even exist if we have those other three iPads available? Well, here's why. Hey guys, this is Jonathan with Retether Tech, and this is the review of the 7th Gen iPad. Yes, the cheapest iPad you can buy, but is it worth it? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this review. Let's start off with the price. This iPad only costs $329. So once again, it's the cheapest iPad you can buy, but there are some drawbacks for that price. First of all, the storage capacity. This iPad for $329, it only gives you 32 gigabytes of storage, which is way too low. That's just unacceptable in 2020. 32 gigabytes of storage, you're going to use that up really fast. If you like to download movies or even download applications, you're going to fill up that storage really, really quickly. In fact, if you go into settings, you'll notice that there's already five gigabytes of storage taken up by the system. And then there's another two and a half gigabytes of storage taken up by system data. So there's seven and a half of gigabytes already used up when you buy this iPad. What I do recommend is to just upgrade to the 128 gigabyte version. That's the most you can get in storage, by the way. And that's an extra hundred dollars. Let's talk about the design now. And this is typical iPad design. If you've ever owned an iPad before, you're going to recognize this design. It's made of metal. It's made of glass. It doesn't have the nice iPad Pro design, which has nice flat edges. It has curved edges which it feels nice in the hands. It has the larger bezels. It doesn't have the iPad Pro bezels, which once again, I love the design of the iPad Pro, the newest version. This has a classic iPad design. It's made with premium materials and it just feels nice in the hands. You're probably gonna end up getting a case anyways. So, but if you don't, it feels good. Inside the iPad has Apple's A10 Fusion chip. And that's an almost four year old chipset. And you might think, wow, that means this iPad is going to run really slow. But actually, this iPad does really, really well, surprisingly. I haven't had any issues where the iPad really slows down or starts to lag. Obviously, if you use applications or you do something with the iPad that's really power intensive, you could start to see it slow down. But for the most part, everyday use, this iPad does really, really well. It's obviously not as fast as something like the A12 Bionic chip, which is inside the iPad Air and the iPad Mini. But for the price, once again, this does a pretty good job. The display is a 10.2 inch display, and this display is also surprisingly good for the price. It's a 2160 by 1620 display. And Actually, when you compare it to the more expensive iPad Air, because this display is slightly smaller than the iPad Air, it's 10.2 inches compared to the iPad Air's 10.5 inches, it actually has the same PPI as the iPad Air. And it's pretty good. It gets you know, plenty bright, in my opinion. I, it looks nice watching movies, watching videos. You won't have any issues with the display. At least I didn't. The difference comes with colors. This doesn't have Apple's true tone display or Apple's wide color display. So colors can be not as vivid as the iPad Air or the iPad mini, but it's an LED display and it's pretty decent. Battery life is also pretty good. I mean, it gets through the, a full day of use. I have no issues getting through a full day and that's what you can expect from an iPad. In fact, Apple claims on their website that this iPad has the same battery life 
as the other three iPads. So that's also pretty good. Their cheapest iPad has the same battery life as the three more expensive iPads. Another cool thing about this iPad is you have the ability to use the Apple Pencil, the first generation Apple Pencil, not the newest Apple Pencil version. It's the older version, but you can still use the Apple Pencil. Now, the Apple Pencil still cost $100, so it's really expensive. It's another Apple product. It costs a lot of money. And unless you're actually going to use it, I wouldn't buy the Apple Pencil. But that option is there. So that's nice that they included the ability to use this Apple Pencil on this iPad. You can take notes, you can draw, you can do all those things that the Apple Pencil does with this iPad. You can also buy Apple's smart keyboard, but I would not buy Apple's smart keyboard if I were you. That's my opinion. It's $159. That's just way too much money for a keyboard for your iPad. I just think that it's just way too expensive and it's not really that good in my opinion. Typing experience is not good uh, for the smart keyboard. If I were you, I would look at other options or maybe not even use a keyboard. Unless you have to, maybe take a look at some other options. Apple is just charging way, way too much money for this smart keyboard, the camera. Well, it has a single eight megapixel camera up front. It also has a selfie camera. So it's great for video calls. Um, you can use Zoom on this iPad. Everyone's using Zoom right now. So it has that, it has a built-in mic. So it's perfect for video calling, but the camera isn't that great. It's one of Apple's older camera sensors. I mean, it does a decent job, but I'm not the type of person that takes pictures with a tablet, with an iPad. So I don't really care too much about what this camera can do. It's nice to have it, but I wouldn't recommend this being your main camera to take pictures. More than likely, the phone you're using probably has a better camera than this iPad does, but it's there if you wanna take an occasional picture. So the question is, is this iPad worth it? Should you buy this iPad? And who is this iPad for? Why does it even exist? That's the question we want to answer, right? Well, the first answer to those questions, is the iPad worth it? Yes, it's worth it for one simple reason, price. It only costs $329. That's a really good price for this iPad. You're getting a lot for that price. And that's what makes this iPad worth it. Now, who is this iPad for? Well, this iPad is a perfect entry level iPad. If you've never owned an iPad before, if you've never owned an Apple Pencil and you've always wanted to try it out, or you're thinking about purchasing an iPad, but you're not sure if you're really gonna use it as much as you would like, this iPad is perfect for you. It's cheap enough that you can buy it and not feel guilty that you spent a lot of money on an expensive device. It's that perfect product to let you see if you truly will love the iPad or not. In fact, it's perfect because it also lets you know if you should upgrade to another iPad later down the line. For example, if you buy this iPad and all you're using it for is watching videos and browsing the web, you probably don't want to buy an iPad Pro. That would just be a waste of money. If you start using this Apple Pencil, the first generation, and you really like it, you're starting to make artwork or design things or start using other applications. Because remember, this iPad has iPad OS built in with all those applications. And if you start using more powerful applications on this iPad and you start really utilizing everything this iPad can do, then maybe it's time to upgrade to a more powerful iPad like the iPad Air or the iPad Pro. This iPad gives you an idea of what to expect when you purchase this tablet. And that's why it's the perfect entry level tablet. I really recommend buying this tablet if you're thinking about buying a tablet, if that makes sense.
What do you guys think of the iPad, the Apple iPad, 7th gen iPad? Let me know with a comment down below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos just like this one on tech news, reviews, and opinions, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.